Good morning, everybody. Okay, so today I wanted to go over the new and improved 2017 2018 version of the Model 60. My Model 60, Marlin type. This is my Marlin 60. We're at the range. I'm just going to go over what I'm using for squirrel season this year, and maybe uh, you might want to do the same. So, in this video, guys, we're talking about the Marlin 60 and my setup for this year. Alright guys, so if you're looking for a 22 rifle that is just the working man's 22 rifle and that'll get the job done and it's kind of the, the, the price point where it just works, this is my 22 rifle. This is the Marlin 60 right here. I have a 3x9x40 scope on this bad boy and I uh, put this one on this year. It's just a Bushnell, Bushnell Banner series. Dusk and Dawn Optics. It is uh, just basically your run of a mill 22. I've got the raised scope mounts on this bad boy just so I can look down and see my sights, which is kind of a null point because I lost the front sight post off this bad boy and I've yet to replace it. But they're cheap and I'll get one, so it's not a problem. But these bad boys retail for like 150 bucks. I got this one for 99 bucks. My dad bought it for me for Christmas when I was like 11 years old, somewhere around there. And I've had it all these years. And uh, they're just a good middle of the road working man's 22 rifle. Basically what I've been shooting in this is just the golden bullets or the bulk box stuff. I'm gonna burn through these today just because the Thunderbolts are not really good ammo, but they're really cheap and they'll foul up your gun real fast, but they'll go bang. I usually hunt with the golden bullets, which are just uh, a little bit more expensive, and the price point is okay, and they don't jam up as much, but these Marlin 60s don't jam up a lot, um, and when they do, it's probably operator error because you haven't cleaned it. Parts are readily accessible. Now, this 22 rifle versus the the Ruger 1022 is, uh, you know, the 1022 is everybody loves it. There's no no problem with it. Uh, there's not really. I would choose one or the other. I've heard that this one's a little more accurate because it's got the micro grooved barrel, and it's got a long barrel. This one's really quiet. I can shoot it without earplugs. And a lot of times when you shoot at squirrels, they don't run, um, get as scared as um, you know. Maybe if the the 22 was louder, that's the only real drawback I can see between the two. This one has a tubular 14 round magazine and the Ruger 1022 has a clip, which the clip does help when you're moving from hunting spot to hunting spot, you know, where you gotta unload your rifle a lot. This one can be a little pain by um, having to do that all the time. Um, but uh, as far as a squirrel rifle, this will get it done. It's, it's accurate um, for 150 bucks, or you can get these things in pawn shops for less than 100 bucks. It's one of the most produced, most sold rifles on the planet. Between this and the Ruger 1022, you can't go wrong, especially for a young kid. He'll have it a long time, and when he wears it out, they're not really expensive to buy again. I've yet to wear this one out, and the 1022s, you're not gonna wear those bad boys out. Those are lifetime rifles, and I think they usually run about 199 bucks to probably 220 bucks and between these two you're not going to be disappointed you're going to shoot a lot of squirrels you're going to kill a lot of stuff and you're going to have a lot of fun so this this is an awesome little rifle it's long it's a little heavy but not too bad it's nothing to ever like go against so we're going to shoot some rounds and i'm going to show you uh just basically what i got going on here i've basically zeroed this, zeroed this rifle at like 25 yards and if i can hit a squirrel at 25 yards hey we're rocking and rolling because that's about where i need to be I just want to hit him about 25 yards. That's the top of any tree. And if I got to do some Kentucky windage, we just got to do some Kentucky windage. All right, guys, so I'm shooting a white claw box down there. Don't hate on me. It was in the garbage can up at the hunting camp. So I can't, I got to recycle. I got to recycle the box. So that means I got to shoot it. Doesn't mean I got alcohol. Okay, so we're just trying to have fun, guys. Weapons on safe. We're gonna check where we've been shooting. Don't laugh at me, the first shot got away from me because I'm gonna blame it on this piece of grass right here. This was in front of my box. This right here 
was in front. So, so don't blame me. So it looks like we're shooting a little high, guys, at 25 yards, and we go down a couple of clicks. Good thing I didn't take a squirrel hunting the other day. Look, right here. All right, so three shots at 25 yards right there. This one got away from me because of the grass. I'm just gonna blame it on the grass. But these three, that's three holes, 25 yards. I was aiming at the center of the seat. So I'm gonna go back, take it down a couple clicks, put some in that C, rock and roll. I might choose another point in the box just so I can make sure I'm A-OK. -okay. The trick is to get zeroed in with just a handful of rounds. Three and move, three and move. I'm gonna move it down just a little bit. One, two, three, four. That's probably, if one quarter inch is at 100 yards, do the math at 25, I guess times it by four or whatever, until you get there. We're going at the top of the E this time. This isn't the best shooting position ever. Pretty good group, pretty good group. All right guys, let me show you after those two. I'm gonna take a walk. I only moved down just a little bit, but it's looking good. One got away from me. Why, because, I just, just because. They didn't get away from me by much, I'd have missed the squirrel. All right, here's those next three shots right here. These are these next three right here. Can you see them? One, two, and three. I was aiming for the, the center of the E. So I'm gonna bring it down, maybe a handful of clicks. Rock and roll. Oh, change my mind. I'm shooting for the, the little spot on the on the on the can. Reload! There's a blade of grass in front of my side optics. It's killing me here. Basically resting this on a box of shells. All right, we're going for the W, guys. We're pretty doggone close, guys. Tell you, Sergeant First Class Cardenas would be really proud of me. I remember what he taught me all those years ago. You gotta really get to that trigger break and stay on it. And you gotta breathe out. If you breathe in and you hold it, sometimes your heartbeat will move it a little bit. So, this is my three right here. This was the one that got away over here because of the grass blade. That's what we're blaming that one on. But these are the three right here. Marlin 60, rock and roll. I think that's pretty good. All right, guys, I wanted to add one more thing that when you're shooting and sighting in your rifle, make sure your posture on the rifle is square. Okay, so one thing that they told us a long time ago, Sergeant Cardenas, if you're watching, that one, your rifle has to be north, south, left, right, right? You've got to have it square to the target because if you are making your adjustments north, south, left, right, and your rifle is tilted like this and you're not square with your optics, you're going to be adjusting at a weird caddy corner. Like you're going to be adjusting like not north, south, left, right. I hope that makes sense. Also, when you are getting down on your rifle, and you get in your position, close your eyes, wiggle, and then open back up and see if your rifle is still on target. Your body position has to be comfortably placed on the target, right? Or when you go to squeeze that trigger, your body is literally going to like, it's hard to explain. It's gonna like, it's gonna shift to where the, the least amount of support is on your body. So the rifle is gonna wanna like almost slide with you. You gotta stay north, south, your positioning, your body, everything has to be in line with the target and squeeze. And if you don't squeeze, you're not gonna get a valid sighting in, right? So you gotta get to the trigger break where you feel like where it's about to break, pop the, the trigger, let it back out to where you feel it click, and that's where you need to hold for the next round. Just hope that helps. North, south, left, right. Make sure you're square, your optics, your crosshairs are completely square on the target. And then adjust your body to make sure you're comfortable and your body frame stays with the target, right? And then you'll get good groups. That's my two cents on that. Now back to shooting. All right guys, so you're wondering about 22 rifle in self-defense or if you had to use this like if we ever got invaded or whatever. 
I would definitely show up at the Milton Militia with this bad boy. I'm not saying I would, I'm just saying if, if the, we were right, being occupied and it was a bad situation, the UFOs and dogs and cats living together, and it's a weird situation, would I show up with this? Absolutely, here's why. That's why. The reason why is that you can throw a lot of lead downrange at one time with this. You can control pairs with this and control pairs two in the chest, one in the head on just about any rifle that will penetrate the target is gonna do the job. Why? One, because 22 rifles are one of the hardest things to operate on the planet because the hole is so small. Two, a 22 rifle shell will basically bounce, ricochet, find its way all the way, in ridiculous places on, on a tissue, right? Or on a human body, right? So when it hits, it bounces, it goes left, right? You might shoot somebody in the chest and it comes out their top of their shoulder. You might shoot them in the chest, it comes out their leg. Like these things are really crazy and you get shot with a 22 rifle, you're done. It might not stop you, but you put two in the same spot, it probably will. You put three in the same spot, it probably will. And one in the, in the face, it definitely will. The thing about these is that there's no recoil. When there's no recoil, you can be on target over and 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 then it falls because you have more rounds. 22 rifle at automatic, though it wouldn't be my first choice for self-defense, definitely capable with hollow points. That's my rant. So to finish this out, guys, I'm shooting, I'm shooting bulk box ammo. I'm getting a group that's pretty small. You know, I'd say like, I'm saying pretty tight. They're all touching with the Marlin 60 at 30 yards. And that's just about where you side in a rimfire. 30 yards, 25 to 30, whatever floats your boat. Bulk box ammo, still putting them in, the, in a group together. I think my old drill sergeant would be proud of the marksmanship skills. And if you're looking for a Christmas present, the Marlin 60 or even the Ruger 1022. They're both great rifles. I think it's all in the operator. And uh, but I have heard this one's a little more accurate because of the micro grooving than the Ruger 1022. All right, guys. So you've seen it. I think my drill sergeant would be proud of me that I've put in all of them pretty much touching together in uh, probably less than a quarter of an inch uh, grouping at 30 yards. Um, 25, to 30, 25 to 30 yards is usually where you sight in a rimfire. Um, that's usually where I'm going to be shooting at squirrels. That's a long ways out there. Um, I'm using bulk box ammo, guys, and I'm still getting groups that are touching at 30 yards. That's pretty awesome. So if you're looking for a cheap Christmas present, or a good Christmas present, 150 bucks at Walmart, or you can probably get them cheaper than that here and there in pawn shops. Parts are readily parts are readily available. Um, uh, 14 rounds, and if I had to show up to the Milton Militia with this bad boy, I would. And I'd put a thousand rounds in my pocket, and I'd be, I'd feel very uh, confident in my skills. So, all right, guys, I hope you like this video. All I got is a cheap. $70 scope on the top of this so I can see the squirrels when it gets dark and I've got the Marlin 60 with bulk box ammo and uh, Hope you guys liked the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe Comment down below with what kind of rifle you use for squirrel season because I like squirrel hunting and I like hearing from you guys So that's it. See you guys later. Follow me on Yak Motley Facebook Instagram later <laughs>